everybody, it's Faith from Creative Bug coming at you live like we do every Tuesday and Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And this is a very exciting occasion. I'm perpetually excited about what I'm about to show you. I'm usually like a here excitement, but today I'm a here excitement because this is our first shoot in our new studio. It's so beautiful here. We're having the best time. It has like a, like a slumber party vibe, but without the pajamas and a lot more work. But like that same enthusiasm and everyone's real stoked to be in our new studio. Um, we're calling it the tree house because there's these beautiful trees right outside and that's one of the most special parts about it. Our old place was a lot higher up and we did not have trees outside of our window. And so in honor of these trees and the birds that live in them, today I'm bringing you a craft of how to make a bird feeder using cookie cutters. These are very decorative, they're really pretty. They'd make fantastic gifts for the bird lover in your life. They're very customizable for the person you're giving them to and also for the bird. Spent a lot of time on bird sites today. So we are live. If you have questions, please write in and I'll do my very best to answer them. I can answer all of your bird feeder questions and a couple of your bird questions. What you'll need for this is a bird seed. I like um, a kind of bird seed that has really small seeds, though if it has bigger chunks in it, that'll work too. This one has a lot of corn and um, black sunflower seed is apparently very popular with all the cool birds. You'll need a bunch of cookie cutters. I'm just going to be using one for purposes of this demonstration, but this recipe will make about six. Or you can use silicone molds. I found those to be really useful as well. You'll need some flour, a bit of corn syrup, a quarter cup of hot water, close to boiling but warmish at the very least, um, a packet of gelatin. You can also use regular mixing bowls, but I have found that gelatin gets very intense and it's hard to get off. So disposable bowls, um, if you want to be wasteful like me. You'll also need some colored ribbon. What color? Anything but white, but we'll talk about that later. Apparently white is a panic color for birds and we don't want the birds to be panicking. The first thing we'll do is mix our gelatin with a quarter cup of hot water. And gelatin is an animal product. If you did want to make a vegan version, I've seen a couple recipes online that use coconut oil. However, coconut oil gets soft at room temperature, so it would really be best if you were living in um, a very cold climate, if you had chili birds. Um, and then the coconut oil would work a lot better. But for our temperature, which is a balmy 70 today, uh, the gelatin works best for our purposes. So we make sure that all the little chunks are out, and then we can set it aside for a minute just to cool down a little bit. And in the meantime, we'll mix our bird seed. We're gonna do one cup of seed to two tablespoons of flour. A budget tip is to get your bird seed at a hardware store. Sometimes they have them in bulk bins. That's what we always did growing up. I was actually surprised that they had them at um, a pet food store and the pet food lady was like, yeah, Birds are pets. Of course, we have pet <laughs> bird seed. But only use uh, what's going to be relevant to your birds. Obviously, you wouldn't want to make this for, um, I don't know, if you had a parrot, I guess you could make it out of parrot seed. So we're going to stir this. Phil from the UK. Hi, Phil. I have a question for you. Yes. That is a great question. Phil asks, because they don't have corn syrup in the UK, what is something that they could use as an alternative? I would say molasses might be a possibility. It just needs to be very sticky and a little bit sweet. Um, I think golden syrup is. And golden syrup. 
Leanna reminds me, is, is the UK equivalent. So don't even worry about molasses. Just use golden syrup. Oh, I've also, I didn't mention, put down protective covering. This is so messy. Bird seed gets everywhere. So make sure your work surface is protected or you have a vacuum cleaner handy. We're going to mix in one tablespoon of corn syrup to our gelatin mixture. Also, one thing you'll find um, when you are making this, if there are other people in your area, will ask you if you're making them granola, and they'll get really excited about it, and then you'll have to break their heart and say, no, this is literally for the birds, not for you. You might want to make some decoy granola. Um, also, when you're done with these, make sure you add a, a post-it note that says, don't eat me, I'm not granola. I'm bird treats. <laughs> Not that I've ever made that mistake myself. Why would you? It, that's, I don't need bird seed. So now that we've mixed the corn <laughs> syrup, I, I, don't, I don't eat bird seed, I promise. Now that we've mixed this together, I definitely, I mean like, well, like I've tasted it, of course. You pour it in and mix it well. This part gets so messy and goopy you also are going to want to make sure you have um, baby wipes on hand because um, it's not great to, um, to wash your hands in the sink when there's a bunch of bird seed. That could clog your pipes. I uh, was not thinking that part through, and it was pointed out to me that that was a terrible idea. So you're going to want to keep mixing it until all the dry seed is incorporated. The, the flour is used as, it helps as a binder, but it's also kind of helpful for this process. When I tried to do it without the flour, I couldn't really tell what parts of the bird seed was dry or not. And so I really liked how I can see that I still have a little ways to go. Also, you might think that this looks really fun to get in with your hands. It's not, it's a terrible mess and it gets stuck in your rings, but um, we're gonna have to use our hands later. So you might as well Mix with a spoon for as long as you can. See, it makes this nice doughy paste. It's kind of the consistency of like a nut butter, which, by the way, is a hotly debated topic in bird circles, whether or not nut butters are OK for birds. Birds like them, but does the nut butter like the birds? Uh, hot, hotly debated. I don't have an answer for you there. Crystal just wrote in asking, is it okay to use peanut butter? It depends on uh, who you Google, Crystal. Some people say that it's not good for birds. I think people today are coming to the conclusion that maybe it is, is okay for birds. Also, speaking of birds, we have some giant airplanes flying over right now. I don't know if anyone else heard that. I love the Blue Angels. Okay, now that we've mixed in all of our dry to the wet, we are going to put it in our cookie cutter. I'm going to use a little bit of corn syrup to, um, as a de-sticking agent, non-stick, not de-stick, non-stick. If you have non-stick spray, that works just as well. And we're going to lightly coat the inside. If you're using um, silicon molds or mats, you'll do the same exact thing. And apparently, it, uh, I didn't read of any accounts of it going horribly wrong without the nonstick coating, but I would err on the side of nonstick. And also, we're on top of a piece of parchment. That is definitely useful. Now we will fill up our molds about halfway. This is very gloopy and exciting. And if you have anything like these points, I'm going to try really hard to get into the points. And if you have short cookie cutters that are about, excuse me, um, if you have short cookie cutters that are about a half an inch, you can go to all the way to the top of the cookie cutter. But this one is closer to an inch, so I'm filling it half full because I'm an optimist. Okay. I 
I intentionally broke that fork, so now we have a, a sophisticated spreading spatula for our corners, of course. Don't forget we are live, so if you have any craft or bird or creative bug related questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. Ke Kelly has a question slash suggestion. Yes, uh, Kelly has a question suggestion, thank you. <sighs> That's what I needed to do. Um, Kelly wants to know, would it be easier if we just put it into a Ziploc bag and kneaded them together? Yes, that's a terrific idea. Thank you so much. Did I complain a little bit too much about this being messy? I might have. Um, <laughs> thank you for your suggestion. I really love that. Yes, I'm totally going to try it next time. Now, can, you, can you remind a couple of our newer viewers what you mixed together? We have mixed flour and bird seed. We mix gelatin and water and corn syrup, and now we're packing it into a cookie cutter. And before it sets any further, we have straws that I've cut about two inches long, and we're going to poke them in. And you're going to want this to be about a half an inch from the sides. Um, if you have less space than that, it's not going to be as sturdy and stable, and I can show you exactly what I mean with my prepared materials. So these I made, um, this is like an ice cube tray or if you want to make heart-shaped cake pops. And this I use making the, the chunkier mixture, um, which, is, which is better for more birds. The thinner mixture is more for finches. And so we pop out the straw and you can see it's not very thick, so it's not going to be super sturdy, but it is going to be super cute. So you'll let this sit overnight. Um, a couple hours I had found was not enough. I want to show you what I've done. So this one sat a couple hours, but I lost some of the definition on the tip, but it's pretty firm now. And these, I don't think it was blended enough. So when I pop it out, it has a lot of excess or detritus, but I'm going to let this harden for um, a few more hours before I attempt to put in the ribbon. Let's see, this will show you the, the unearthing. No, that's the opposite of unearthing. The divulging process, no, the, the getting it out of the cookie cutter. The which one? The reveal, the reveal. This is the grand reveal. This is an adorable moose cookie cutter from Leanna. Let's see if we can, yeah, you have to be very careful. Can you hear the planes? They're so loud. <laughs> and look at that, oh my god, that's so cute. So this is what I mean about customizable. If you have a favorite cookie cutter, or let's say someone gave you a cookie cutter and then you want to prove to them that you absolutely adore it, this is a really sweet thing to make with it. And I'm going to show you how to attach the ribbon with one of these little chunkers. Oh, and I also have, this is my um, silicone molds, and this is I think the easiest to use, and that pops out really conveniently. So we have our, oh, see, that's what I meant about it being too tiny. But then you can just crumble it up and put it in your bird feeder. And now we're going to get about 10 inches of ribbon. I had one of the most pleasurable Googles of, Google searches of my life, what color do birds like? Um, a bunch of different colors. Finches like um, green, hummingbirds like bright colors, tropical birds like bright colors. Doves, uh, bright colors make them nervous. They're a nervous bird. And so um, they prefer natural colors like grays, beiges, and um, I think all birds can agree on the fact that they're totally into green. So um, we can do it two different ways here. We get, Nine out of ten. They're, they love green. They love trees. It makes sense. So this we just strung it straight through. But this one I think gives a little pizzazz if you're using a really fun ribbon like we are to thread the ends through first before you pull it all the way through. Insert the ends in here. So we have our little, little donut and then knot 
the ends together. And when you hang these, make sure you're hanging them close to a branch that the bird can perch on. Um, not all birds can just eat out of thin air, like hummingbirds, because they're freaks. And so this is the one we just made. We'll be letting this sit overnight before attempting to poke it out. I think that'll make a beautiful one. And I'll be using, of course, the rest of this to fill the rest of my molds. But I'm going to do that um, by myself in private. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to welcome you into our brand new space. And we look forward to seeing you next week.